So this story is uh, actually based on a short story from the Bible where a preacher, which is a moral or religious teacher, uh, is in town and Eutychus is someone who comes to learn from him. So what I'd actually like you to do is pause it on this page, pause this video and have a read. This is directly from the King James Version of the Bible, which uh, Rosemary Dobson would have probably read from. Have a quick read. This is the whole story on this slide. So just pause it, have a read through. Uh, read through carefully because much of the exact phrasing in this is mirrored in Dobson's poem. So pause it now. Oh, uh, one more thing. If you want to see this online, maybe find some context for the story, etc. Uh, you can click on the link here if you're on the mix. If you're in the video, you can just use Google. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have a read through first, uh, and then I'll briefly go through the story, and then we'll dig into each stanza. So first, the read through. Eutychus. The first day of the week he spoke to them, in Troas when they met to break their bread, and preached to, till midnight. Eutychus afterwards could not remember anything he said. This was an irony not easily faced, Indeed, he kept it largely unconfessed, that after travelling many days and nights, in dangers often and by hardships pressed, to hear the words of Paulus and receive some healing comfort for his troubled mind, he could not fix his thoughts, was sorely vexed by others pushing in the crowd behind. Till, smarting with discomfiture and grief, he reached a window not above his height, and climbed on the sill and looking out, breathed in the soporific airs of night. To saints who have received the word of God, one lifetime is too short for telling all. The joyful news and certainly an hour did not suffice in Troas for St. Paul. His discourse lengthened, Eutychus's head sank on his chest, and for his sake we weep. The saint in words that none who heard forgot spoke of Damascus. Eutychus was asleep. Now they were gathered in an upper room that rose three lofts above as it set and from his window Eutychus fell down, and those that took him up pronounced him dead. St. Paul went straight away to the youth and held his body in his arms, and cried to those who stood about, Be troubled not, for see, his life is in him. And the young man rose. His troubled mind at peace, his body healed, and others there were saved that else were lost. And in the morning Paul went on afoot to reach Jerusalem by Pentecost. I like this story of young Eutychus, for I, like him, am troubled too and weak, and may, like him, be too preoccupied to listen if a saint should come to speak. And yet I think, if some event befell, to bring me face to face with holiness, I should not fail to recognise the truth and spring to life again, like Eutychus. Okay, so hopefully... Uh, you followed the story. Hopefully my reading uh, gives you a sense of the tone with which it should be read. Uh, gives you a sense of the rhythm of it as well. Uh, let's have a brief look through the story. So in the first uh, stanza here, uh, they meet, probably travelled with or to meet Paul. Uh, Eutychus has come to try and learn from Paul. Paul's a, a teacher, a moral teacher or a re religious teacher. He's teaching about uh, the life of Jesus. So Eutychus has come to try and hear Paul and try and get some, some mental comfort or some physical discomfort. He's a troubled person. Now, the irony is he comes and uh, he, he can't focus on what Paul's saying because even though he's traveled through danger and been pressed by hardships, uh, when he's listening to Paul, he can't fix his thoughts. He's sorely vexed by the crowd. There's people pushing in the crowd as they're all listening, he gets really annoyed. So he tries to run away from this crowd. He tries to uh, climb up on a windowsill and try and listen from there. He's out of the crowd. He's not getting jostled anymore, but he's up on the windowsill. He's still finding it hard to focus. So uh, stanza five, Paul is uh, preaching. He's saying a lot of cool stuff. Uh, certainly an hour did not suffice in Troas for St. Paul. He's got heaps of cool stuff to say. His discourse lengthens, so he talks for a long, long time. He's preaching, he's teaching all the people who are with him there. 
and Eutychus's head sinks on his chest and he falls asleep. So here's the irony. Uh, Eutychus can't pay attention. What a poor guy. And for his sake, we weep because he, uh, he doesn't get to hear the message. He misses out on the message that was meant or he wanted to hear for, to get some comfort. Now, he's sitting in this windowsill and they're three stories up and he falls asleep and down he falls. And here, falls and dies. Unlucky Eutychus. So, but uh, Paul goes down, runs down the stairs, goes to the youth and holds him and says, be troubled not, for see, his life is in him. So uh, he rises up again. So he was dead and now he's back, he's risen. Uh, and these two lines are quite important actually, just here. So his troubled mind is at peace and his body is healed. Uh, and others were saved that else were lost. Uh, in the morning, Paul goes off to another place we'll talk about. And then the last two, uh, the last two stanzas here are Dobson relating to this story of Eutychus. This poor guy who wasn't able to focus to hear a message, but who was healed by Paul uh, when he came face to face with holiness. So uh, I guess the final question here for us to think about as we get to this end bit is, uh, what can we learn from this story of Eutychus? What has Dobson learned and what does she want us to relate to in the story of Eutychus? Okay, so let's start digging into this poem. Uh, the first thing I want to mention that I won't talk about a lot throughout the rest of this video, but you should be noticing is the form of this poem. So what's the rhyme structure? How does that make the poem sound? And also what is the rhythm? What uh, kind of tone or mood does the rhyme and rhythm of this poem set up? Uh, okay, moving on. So we'll start with the first stanza. The first day of the week, he spoke to them. The first thing you should notice is that uh, this line is almost a direct copy from the King James Version, uh, verse 7, I think, if you want to flick back to that page. So Dobson is very clearly signaling to her readers that she's talking about the Eutychus story in the Bible, and she'll proceed to make a number of other direct uh, references to the, the Bible story. So be alert for them. Uh, and think about how you'd write about those references in your analysis as well. Okay, uh, in Troas, when they met to break their bread, it's another biblical allusion, but to break bread more generally means to eat with someone in a very communal sense. So you break bread with friends or family, uh, loved ones, or when you wish to discuss something. And it says, and then they preached till midnight. Eutychus afterwards could not remember anything he said. So how does the final line of this, the final line change the tone of the poem, even just stanza one? It's quite serious. The first day of the week he spoke to them in Troas when they met to break their bread and preach till midnight. Eutychus afterwards could not remember anything he said. I should tell you a bit about Eutychus, but I think it also gives it a bit of a child story, children's story feel. Uh, you should think about how the rhythm and rhyme structure throughout this adds to that feeling, that mood. All right. Uh, We'll go into the next one. This was not an irony not easily faced. Indeed, he kept it largely unconfessed that after traveling many days and nights in dangers often and by hardships pressed to hear the words of Paulus and receive some healing comfort for his troubled mind, he could not fix his thoughts, was sorely vexed by others pushing in the crowd behind. Uh, let's just notice uh, before we talk about the irony that Dobson is more and more uh, flowing between stanzas, using punctuation to continue between stanzas. Not something she's done as much. She's more and more in her poetry as she gets older doing this. Um, just something to notice. Uh, so the irony. What's the irony? The irony not easily faced is that he's travelled through hardships, a troubled guy. He needs some, uh, some teaching. He, he wants some mental comfort. And he can't get it because... He's so distracted, he can't fix his thoughts, he's sorely vexed by the people pushing in the crowd. He'd like some healing comfort for his troubled mind. 
So this is a poor guy. He's not really able to focus very well. He gets very distracted by the crowd. Uh, he can't focus on the teaching that Paul that he needs from Paul. Uh, okay, the rhyme structure. So A B C B all the way through. Have a brief read of that. And that one as well. Now, fourth stanza. Smarting with discomfiture and grief. Smarting just means stinging or upset with. Uh, with discomfiture and grief, he reaches a window. He's annoyed by the crowd. He finds a window. He climbs up on the sill and looking out, he breathes the soporific airs of night. So he's much more comfortable up in the windowsill listening to Paul, but he hears these soporific he, sorry, smells these soporific, soporific airs of night, which means soporific means sleep-inducing. Uh, hopefully this video isn't too much of a soporific for you. Okay, next stanza. Uh, this one doesn't advance the plot terribly much, but it does have a pretty key message that's important in terms of building the message of this poem for Dobson. So, to saints who have received the word of God, one lifetime is too short for telling all. The joyful news, and certainly an hour, did not suffice in Troas for St. Paul. So, the word of God, that should be a phrase that you uh, remember. The word of God's very important key phrase. Go and look in the Wikipedia if you've forgotten what that means. Uh, a saint is someone who has a particularly strong relationship with God, uh, does God's work, or teaches God's uh, lessons. One lifetime is too short for telling all the joyful news. The Bible is sometimes called the joyful news or the good news. Uh, teaches about the redemption of humanity, so it's good news in that sense. Uh, and certainly an hour did not suffice in Troas for St. Paul. So he's got heaps of really cool stuff to say, to teach about. Um, obviously this is going to add to the irony because Eutychus, Eutychus's head sinks to his chest and he falls asleep. Uh, and there's a sense of loss here from Dobson, so for his sake we weep because he's, he's missed out on the good news. Uh, the saint in words that none who heard forgot spoke of Damascus. So he's teaching amazing things. Everyone there is changed by what he's saying. And uh, Eutychus is asleep. And what a shame for him. Uh, he's a bit of a... He's not doing very well, uh, Eutychus. He, he gets distracted by the crowd. He can't really focus on things. He's up in this window and he falls asleep. All right, next one. Now, they were gathered in an upper room that rose three lofts above, as it, as it said. So, they're three stories high. And from this window, from his window, Eutychus fell down, and those that took him up pronounced him dead. Now, this is a little contentious for Christian theologians. Uh, some people think he didn't really die. Some people think he did. The standard Catholic interpretation would have been that he did die, uh, and that then when Paul came down, he was... He rose again from from death, so that would be the standard interpretation. Uh, it's a little bit uh, supported by the fact that the person writing this this book in the Bible was called Luke. He was a doctor, so he would have been pretty aware um, medically of what death and life and all that was about. So it seems to be supported uh, in the Bible that he did die. Any in any case, there's a there's a big transformation here. This it's a big event, obviously, for Eutychus. We're supposed to feel a bit sorry for him, I think. It's unlucky. Uh, but let's see what happens next. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, Eutychus has just died, fell out the window. Uh, St. Paul rushes downstairs, went straight away to the youth and held his body in his arms and cried to those who stood about, Be troubled not, for see, his life is in him. And the young man rose. So, uh, these lines, Paul's lines, are uh, direct biblical references to the story. You can go back and have a look. Uh, and rose or rising is particularly relevant uh, biblically as well because Jesus, the main figure of Catholicism, uh, rose from the dead. Now, regardless of um, what the uh, interpretation of this story is, whether he really died when he went to the ground or not, uh, the important bit is that when he rises, when he rises, his troubled mind is at peace. So he goes through this transformation process. His his body is healed, and others there were saved that else were lost. 
And that means saved by their belief, their belief in uh, Jesus, as told by the, the teachings of Paul. So their belief in the teachings of Paul. Uh, and they're saved by their belief. Uh, okay, so as uh, then Paul goes on a foot to reach Jerusalem by Pentecost. So it's a happy ending for Eutychus, uh, right? Even though he's a troubled guy, he couldn't really focus. Uh, when he died, Paul came. He was transformed. He had this experience of this divine experience. So it's terrible thing happened where he died he experiences death or at least something very close to death and then uh, he has this divine experience and his troubled mind is at peace uh, his body is healed think about what that might uh, what Dobson might relate to with that his troubled mind being at peace and his body being healed all right others there were saved the elsewhere lost in the morning paul goes afoot to reach jerusalem by pentecost jerusalem is a really important holy city for uh, catholics and pentecost is a holy festival uh, originally it was a jewish harvest festival and now everyone sort of uses it for different things a bit like we use christmas uh okay one question here if this was a children's story taught in church Sunday school, the story of Eutychus, who couldn't really pay attention, he has trouble listening maybe, but then he experiences God and he's transformed. What do you think the message of that would be? What is the takeaway message? Have a think about that. And let's move into what Dobson takes away from this, from this poem, which she finishes her poem with. So, I like this story of young Eutychus. For I, like him, I, using the personal pronoun again, uh, to make this her interpretation, her reflection, her story. This is similar to the way she's done this in other poems. I am troubled, weak, and preoccupied, and too too preoccupied perhaps to listen if a saint should come to speak. She's saying that even if someone saint-like, maybe like Paul, or someone who is um, a great moral teacher would come to speak, she might be too preoccupied to listen. Uh, she's saying she's too uh, perhaps broken or too frail to properly hear. Uh, and yet, she thinks that if some event befell me to bring me face to face with holiness, some bad event, bring me face to face with holiness, with the divine, I should not fail to recognize the truth and spring to life again like Eutychus. Okay. Uh, so, Dobson finds herself able to relate to Eutychus. What can she relate to in Eutychus? What is it that she likes about Eutychus? Um, can you relate to Eutychus? Might be an interesting question. And then finally, to recognise that at the end of this, maybe this relates to other things we've studied before. So, have any events occurred for Dobson at this point in her life? Thinking about the timeline of her life again, even the poems we've studied. What terrible events have happened, perhaps events relating to death or being mentally troubled uh, by an experience of death? How did her response to those, we've studied a couple of poems out of Winter and Annunciations, her responses to terrible events, how did her responses mirror the story of Eutychus and his response? Was there some sort of transformation? Did she rise again? Uh, was she transformed? Did she find herself uh, calmed mentally, physically, physically healed? So what is the good news of this story of Eutychus for Dobson is the key question. What does she relate to about, uh, what does she relate to in the story of Eutychus herself? Okay, and in this last line we have the word spring, so and spring to life again like Eutychus, particularly thinking about the poem Out of Winter. What does spring again represent in this poem, as it might have there, as it has in her other poems? Some final questions to finish up your thinking about this poem. Uh, what themes are often present in Dobson's poems that are present here? Uh, so perhaps, uh, what themes are we thinking about, like death or Life is water, is time, is capturing moments, is experience of the divine. What symbols are present here, as in other poems that we've studied? And last one, how are the ordinary or, and the divine 
brought together here compared with her other works? Is it a similar way? Is it the same way? Is it more positive or negative? Is it sadder or happier? Have a think about those and we'll see you for the next one.